basic two-person throws and also the single-person throw for a potential rescue. We want to be proficient at using as little people as we can to do a single throw to do a rescue fast and efficiently, especially if we are a two-person crew instead of our typical four-person crew. So today we'll go through all the basics, walk you guys through it, and then we'll again meet and go over the hands-on portion. So the first throw we're going to demonstrate is a uh, removing the ladder off the truck, a suitcase carry to a flat, uh, flat raise, and Eric's going to demonstrate that for us. All right, so we're gonna break down what Eric just did in a little bit of slow motion and go through it step by step. So he's gonna find the, the balance point in the ladder. He's gonna lift the ladder into a suitcase carry. This is a low carry. So he's not gonna throw the ladder. He's gonna bring the ladder to the building and sit it down. So he places the ladder up against the building. He has a fixed point. He doesn't need another person to put the ladder because he's using building to flip the ladder itself. He's going to call his overhead clear like we normally do and now he's going to do a flat raise just like we always have traditionally. So utilizing the beams instead of the rungs, puts the ladder all the way to flat, comes down, grabs the bottom of the ladder, brings it out and finds the 25 degree angle. Once he's decided where he's going to meet his, uh, whatever his beam is that he's setting the ladder for, going to step on, make sure he's got his 90 degree angle on himself, set the ladder, especially if it's on any sort of grass or mud, and now we're ready to, to use our ladder. So now we're going to demonstrate how to remove a 24 by yourself, find the balance point, and then take it from that low position and flip it up into a high shoulder so you can go right into a stick. So you can see Eric's placing his hand. His left hand is going this way, is low. His right hand is high because these are gonna flip as he brings his ladder up on his shoulder. He's gonna use his pelvis and really flip the ladder using his hips. So he flips it right up onto his high shoulder. Now he can go right into a high position stick. So Eric's gonna bring the ladder in. He's at the high shoulder position, so he can go right into a stick, into a beam raise. That way when he sits the ladder down, three quarters of the work is already done. He's almost got his ladder up. As he comes up, he's identifying that he is fly out, so he can set this, build, this ladder to go right into the building. But, overhead. So he does the high ladder stick, real simple. Now he's gonna bring his right foot in, his right knee, and place it right on the beam to gain that control. He's gonna untie his ladder. Now as an agency, we're gonna tie all ladders on the bottom rung with a single overhand knot so we all know where they are and how to untie them. Okay, so Eric's gonna now raise the ladder. So you can tell that he is grabbing the ladder inside and grabbing a bite and pulling down. He's not pulling like this. Every time he's got a secure hold, he's grabbing a bite hand over hand. He's able to stabilize this ladder because he has it locked into his leg. If this ladder starts to wander on him, he's got his elbow right here. He's not going to stick his hand in. He's not going to grab these rungs because if that ladder comes down, he's going to lose that hand. So he's utilizing his forearm to control the ladder. If the ladder starts getting away from him, it's a windy day or something, he's going to take that ladder and he's going to shove it into the building and he's going to start over. So once he's reached the height that he wants to achieve, now he can tie off his ladder. So Eric's gonna demonstrate the bow string method. This is a really simple, really fast way to tie the ladder off. He's gonna take the slack, he's gonna throw it under the rung he wants to tie to. Once he goes through the rung, he's gonna bring his hand over the, 
over the rung, bring that out. He's going to take his left hand and he's going to lock the rope over it. And now he's going to go through again, pass that rope to his left hand and bring it through. He's going to take the rest of his slack. He's going to tie an overhand knot, just like we always have. Get our safety knot in there. All this slack is nice, nice and controlled back here out of the way. So now he set the ladder. We have the ladder fly into the building. He's going to decide exactly where he needs to move this ladder and he's going to flip the ladder so it's fly out. The reason that we set the ladder fly in is so that he can control the ladder while looking up and making adjustments. He's not behind the ladder trying to keep it up. And also if he loses that ladder, he has the ability to put it into the building. So once we get it up, now we're going to turn it around and place it fly out so that if we have a rescue or a firefighter that comes down the ladder, they don't have to go over the bump where the second piece of the ladder extends. So once he's moved the ladder and set it fly out, he's going to adjust the ladder for angle. He's keeping his head up, he's looking at the tip so he doesn't lose control of the tip because that's the most important thing. He's going to bring it out, try to gain his 25 degree angle. Now he's going to set the ladder just like we do any other time, making sure his, his arms are at a 90 degree angle. So we've decided to make it a department standard that we're going to tie all of our halyards on the bottom rung with a single overhand knot. That way we all know where to get it and it's very easy to untie. They're all tied the same. So if we've raised our ladder the full length, we don't have to untie that. We can just work with the slack. We can use the bowstring method. So I'm at the front of the ladder. The uh, rope is on the front side. I'm going to bring it through and I'm going to come back on one side of the knot. I'm going to string my bow all the way back so I have plenty of slack. Now I'm going to put it over this forearm. I'm going to come under the rung on this side of the knot and pass that knot through and now I just bring my hand back on itself. Now I've created my clove hitch, very simply and very fast. Now I just go into the knot, the same direction the knot's going. I tie it off. I leave all this slack right out front because when I flip this ladder over, it's all in the back. Everything's out of the way. It's ready to go. All right, so now we're going to demonstrate if we set our ladder too low and we got to go up, how we're going to extend it. The first option is we can take the base and move it all the way into the wall, just like we did when we raised it by ourselves. The faster way is to just pull it back off. If your angle is pretty wide like this, you would want to bring your ladder in a little bit so you don't have to really muscle it. So that's pretty tough from all the way out here so he can bring his ladder back in with the back about his 25. Now he's going to take his strong hand, however he raises the halyard, he's going to put this one on the beam take his other hand and he's going to go behind his head so that he's pulling back. If you try to pull down, you're going to raise the ladder. So he's pulling back, he's lifting the ladder out. If again the ladder gets away from him, he's going to put his forearm there. As this ladder comes in and off balance, he's going to balance it between his left hand pulling back and his forearm pulling forward. Part of getting used to this concept is going to be just balancing the ladder one-handed with your halyard. So now he's gone out, now he can again raise the ladder or lower the ladder, make the adjustments he needs, utilizing just himself. He can use his hand to balance the ladder back and forth. He just doesn't want to put his arms through the rung. So he's going to bring the ladder all the way down, set the dogs, now we can lower the ladder. So the other method we're going to show you to get to high shoulder is working it down the beam, the flip it up on your shoulder, uh, it works really well, but for some people that's just not going to be physically achievable. This method should be achievable for anybody to get that ladder up on the high shoulder so they can do a one-person stick. So Eric's going to demonstrate. You just sit your ladder down, figure out which side you want your uh, beam on, and he's going to put it on his right shoulder. He's just going to go down grabbing the rungs. He's going to work up until he finds his balance point. Once he finds his balance point, he's just going to lift the butt end up, put it on high shoulder, and now take it for throw. All right, so Eric again is going to demonstrate how to take the 24-foot, uh, much easier with a uh, roof ladder. He's going to take it from the suitcase carry and flip it up onto his shoulder so he can do a high, high shoulder stick. So he wants to set his ladder so that when he flips it up, it's going to be beamed ahead so he doesn't have to flip the ladder over when he does his high shoulder stick. So 
So he lifts, he lifts it up. He's got his hands one rung apart from each other with a, a rung in between. He's got his left hand low, his right hand high. When he flips this ladder over, they will change so that that gives him his support hand on the high side. He's, gonna, he's got it flat. He's got it into his pelvis. He's going to use his hips, and he's going to flip the ladder up. Comes up real easy. Now he's got one hand high, readjusts his, his hands. If his balance point is a little off, he can uh, move his ladder to set the balance point. Now he's right in and ready for a high shoulder stick. So Eric's going to demonstrate the flat high shoulder stick. If he doesn't need to do a beam raise, he doesn't have to. He'll take his ladder right into the base of the building, put the butt down, put the hand against the building, and work from it there. All right, so we're gonna let Eric demonstrate what this looks like at full speed and take it from the truck into a high shoulder throw. He's gonna raise it five rungs, secure it, put it against the building in, in about a minute. All right, so the last thing we're going to demonstrate is a two-person ladder carry. If time is not of the essence and, you know, we need a 24, we can do a two-person carry. Uh, if we're working off the ladder company, we have a 35-footer. That's always going to be a two-person carry. So we went over the suitcase carry, the high shoulder carry. We're going to demonstrate the low shoulder carry into a flat raise. So when we uh, decide we're going to pull this ladder off the truck, one person's going to be our butt person, just like typical. We're going to go ahead and go bed to head when we bring it off. The butt person will lead and they will also make the call. So we're not going to get into a lot of uh, nomenclature or calling everything out. We want to make sure we're on the same page. We're pulling it out. We're going to a left shoulder, low shoulder carry. choose to hold on to the bottom rung. I can help my partner out if I actually grab this halyard and put my weight back and pull the ladder up as he's raising it. So we're going to go ahead, overhead's clear, and we're going to go up. I'm going to sit here until this ladder is all the way in the air. And then I'm going to bring it up. Now I'm going to hold the ladder. He's going to work from the outside in fly in just like we do with the 24s so he can see where his tip is going. We've gotten away from the person in the back raising because you can't see where your tip is going. So he can be out there, it's a heavy ladder, I can support it for him, he can spot it and he can raise it. Okay, so when we're setting a 35, we've got three sections. We want to make sure that we get the dogs locked on the second section as well as on the third section. We're going to bring it into the building. We're going to flip it over now. This is a bit of a heavier ladder, so this needs to be a coordinated event. So 
He's going to go ahead and tie his ladder off. All right, so we're going to flip our ladder over so we can have our fly out. This always has to be a coordinated event. We should both be on one rung. We need to coordinate this and say we're going to rotate on the right rung. We're going to bring the ladder back out. All right. So we're going to go ahead. This will be a coordinated, uh, coordinated flip. We're going to identify the beam that we're rotating it on. So we're going to rotate on the right beam. And we're going to just flip it over towards Eric. One, two, three, flip. So now when we set our ladder, we both want to take a rung. We're basically working, we're not both trying to pull out from the middle. We're both working off one beam, excuse me, beam. So we're going to bring the ladder out to our angle. We're going to grab the same rung, our other hand up here, and we're going to bring this ladder out. One, two, three. We set the ladder. We also want to make sure that we're setting in the middle, so we're setting it equally, not off to one side. So we're going to put it there. We're going to set it. We're going to get our angle just like we typically would. So the last thing we're going to talk about is butting the ladder. Traditionally, we used to come behind the ladder and pull the ladder in. Unfortunately, everything that is being worked on is right above our head. We have no ability to see what's going on above us. If this is not on concrete, if you're in dirt or sand and you can set this ladder, we're going to set it and then we're going to forget it. It's a wasted wasted piece of manpower to have somebody holding a ladder that's not going anywhere. If this is on concrete and we have to set it, we're going to set it from the front. And that's real easily accomplished by putting one foot on one of the butts and holding the ladder in like this. Now we can be out, we can be uh, heads up, we can be assessing the guys, our crew that's working on the ladder, if they're calling for something. If uh, we have something, uh, uh, firefighters that are going to have to bail out another window, I immediately can recognize that they're coming out that window. I can move that ladder over. So we want to be out here, be heads up, and all it takes is just one foot on the butt to hold the ladder. Come on, skinny.